You may have seen a video that went viral on social media of Dr. Julie Panessi, an ethics professor at Huron University College, who has been placed on a paid leave and is not allowed to go on her university campus because she declined to take the COVID vaccine. My school employs me to be an authority on the subject of ethics. I hold a PhD in ethics and ancient philosophy. And I'm here to tell you it's ethically wrong to coerce someone to take a vaccine. If it happens to you, you don't have to do it. If you don't want a COVID vaccine, don't take one. End of discussion. It's your own business. But that is not the approach of the University of Western Ontario, which has suddenly required that I be vaccinated immediately or not report for work. So with the school year beginning in a few days, I am facing imminent dismissal after 20 years on the job because I will not submit to having an experimental vaccine injected into my body. I've had plenty of vaccines in my life, but I've never been forced to take one. It's always been my choice. Now, what I like about Julie Panessi is she's being very principled about this. She told the National Post that although she may qualify for an exemption, she doesn't want to get one because that would be acquiescing to the mandate in some sense. She said, I want to be very clear in rejecting it in principle. I don't think we ever should have to be in the place where we're looking at the situation of mandates. So I'm not just seeking an exemption to one, I'm challenging the very foundation of the idea. Another thing I like is she has been making the point that even if you don't have the, the best explanation or reason for not getting the vaccine, um, that doesn't mean you should be coerced into getting it. So unfortunately, I hear a lot of people who are, to their credit, pro-choice when it comes to the COVID vaccine, but they always add on caveats like, well, if you don't have a legitimate exemption, then you should get it. And then they kind of make digs at people who aren't getting it for personal reasons and saying that, you know, oh, some people are just very conspiratorial and they're tin hat, tinfoil hat people, and uh, it's just they're subject to misinformation, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of people willing to get behind people with exemptions. But in my view, the only argument that really matters is if someone is personally unsettled by getting a pharmaceutical product injected into their body, then they shouldn't be intimidated into getting it. End of story. Now, of course, we're seeing the usual attacks on Dr. Panessi as a way to delegitimize her concerns and her arguments and what she's going through. Uh, there is an emphasis on the fact that she has been on Maxine Bernier's YouTube channel and spoke at a People's Party rally, uh, as if that makes her a terrible person or something. Then there are the expected attacks on her professional legitimacy, uh, because of course your education and your experiences only matter if you are on the right side of an issue, otherwise you're just some sort of fraud and you don't really deserve your PhD. But in any case, Panessi is on a temporary leave. She's not allowed to access her campus. And we will see what happens with this case. It's a very important one to follow. If we want to assume the best of the university, then, you know, maybe they'll try to work something out with her. But uh, if not, and she does end up fired, then I think this could be one of the first high profile public incidents where someone who is not a healthcare worker is losing their job over the mandate. I'm Lindsay Shepard with True North. Thanks so much for watching. If you like our coverage and commentary, please consider supporting us at donate.tnc.news. I will see you next time. Bye.